everyone. My name is Lean Alkukun. I'm an R3 resident at SUNY Upstate, and I will be presenting the case of the day regarding heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy. We present the case of a 30-year-old male who presented with a six-week history of acute onset gait dysfunction, speech dysfunction, and ataxia. The patient had a past medical history significant for intravenous heroin and MDMA use for the past seven years. On physical exam, the patient was awake aware and oriented. He demonstrated cerebellar ataxia, mild to moderate ataxia on finger to nose test, mild truncal ataxia with an unsteady gait. His sodium, glucose, folate, methylmalonic acid, and vitamins B6 and B12 levels were within normal limits. The patient then underwent an unenhanced CT of the brain to further evaluate his symptoms. We have two axial cuts of the brain here. Figure A on the left is at the level of the basal ganglia, demonstrating symmetric hypodensities in the bilateral posterior limbs of the internal capsule and the subcortical white matter of the bilateral occipital lobes. Figure B on the right is at the level of the cerebellum, demonstrating hypodensities in the white matter of the cerebellum bilaterally. The patient then underwent an MRI of his brain with and without contrast to evaluate his CT findings. Figure A on the left is an axial flare image of the brain at the level of the basal ganglia. It demonstrated signal hyperintensity of the subcortical white matter in the occipital lobes and the bilateral posterior limbs of the internal capsules. Notice the sparing of the anterior limbs of the internal capsules bilaterally. Figures B and C are the diffusion-weighted images and the corresponding ADC map at that level. Although the lesions demonstrate a bright signal on the DWI images, they do not have a corresponding dark signal on the ADC map, and hence are not diffusion restricting. Figure D is a contrast enhanced T1 image at that level, which should not demonstrate any enhancement of these lesions. The cerebellar white matter lesions had the similar imaging characteristics. Our final diagnosis was heroin induced leukoencephalopathy. Symmetric involvement of the white matter tracts in the bilateral parietal and occipital lobes, the cerebellum, and the posterior limbs of the internal capsules with relative sparing of the anterior limbs is characteristic of heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy. Heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy should be considered in any patient with posterior cerebral and cerebellar white matter abnormalities in a normotensive patient. History is very crucial in this case as the lack of use of other toxins such as chemotherapeutic agents and medications makes those diagnoses less likely. Our top differential diagnosis in this case was acute hypertensive encephalopathy, also known as PRESS. However, the involvement of the posterior limbs of the internal capsules with sparing of the anterior limbs is characteristic of heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy. Also, the patient lacked any underlying cause for press and was normotensive on presentation. Other causes for acute toxic leukoencephalopathy were ruled out by history. The take-home messages for this case are as follows. Acute toxic leukoencephalopathy is a spectrum of diseases that occur due to white matter injury with multiple etiologies. The most common causes of acute toxic leukoencephalopathy are chemotherapeutic agents followed by opioids. The key differentiating feature for heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy on imaging is the involvement of the cerebellum in a normotensive patient. In heroin-induced leukoencephalopathy, the cerebellum and the posterior limbs of the internal capsules are symmetrically involved. The relative sparing of the anterior limbs of the internal capsules is pathognomonic of the disease. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.